2 Peter chapter 1, we're going to start reading in verse number 2. The Bible says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And, you know, I don't know about you, my mind is just spinning on all this stuff in verse number four, how great this verse is that God's given unto us these great and exceeding, these, these precious promises. And every promise of God, is a, it's a great promise, precious, something that we can just completely rely in and trust in. And that by these, by these promises, we can be partakers of the divine nature, of a godly nature, not of a sinful fleshly nature, but a godly nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, so we need to be aware and we need to be diligent, add to your faith virtue. Virtue is, is doing right, good things, doing right things, right? And to, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, we get knowledge of God and the Holy Ghost of what he's going to do. And then temperance is being able to have self-control. If you're temperate, if you have a good temper, if you don't have a bad temper, a bad temper means what you're losing it, right? You're losing control. But being, having a good temper means even when bad things happen, even when stressful things happen, even when people can come and try to attack you, you can keep a level head, a sound mind in the spirit that God has given you. Having temperance. And to temperance, patience. Again, those two kind of go hand in hand. You're, you're controlling yourself and going through patiently and the patience, godliness, and the godliness, brotherly kindness, and the brotherly kindness, charity. So that in events like this, when people freak out and they have fear, they're only thinking about themselves. They're going to be going, oh, man, I need to get this, and I need to get that, and I need to get money. But if you can have the temperance, the sound mind, the patience, the hope, you could add to all these things, and you could add the charity and the brotherly kindness that goes, you know what? There's a lot of people struggling with this. Maybe I can help them. What can I do to help other people during a difficult time instead of just worrying about me? And that's the end, you know, it's not always easy to do because our sinful flesh nature is going to tell us and guide us to do the opposite in self-preservation. But if God's preserving us, and if we're doing what God has for us to do, then he's, go he's going to care for us and protect us. It's okay to help people. And it's better, not just okay, it's way better to help people in times of trouble. I mean, think about this. It's because it's easy. The, your instinct is going to say, well, you know, I've got this stuff stashed away, and I was smart, and I stashed away for, you know, they should have done the same thing. And then shutting up your bowels of compassion during difficult times, what we ought to have is the charity and brotherly kindness to love people enough to say, hey, you know, yeah, we're doing well, so we're going to help those that aren't doing so well. And, you know, maybe you can be used of God as a provision for someone else that's living righteously, that's doing right, that's, that's going to be provided for ultimately by God. Because if God allowed you to have things even built up, then why don't you praise God for that and say, here, God, These people that are doing right and they're living righteously and have no reason to fear can now be provided for as well. God might have given you a blessing to be in that position to be able to support others. But if you don't have these things in your heart, if these aren't part of who you are, having that faith and adding virtue and adding knowledge and temperance and patience and godliness and brotherly kindness and charity, then 
you're not going to have that attitude, but, but this is a righteous, godly attitude to have, and this is where we ought to be, have our minds instead of freaking out and being in a spirit of fear.